Sir, the orcs are attacking. I see him. Corbeck, call in reinforcements. Yes, sir. I'll assemble the troops. Hi, I'm Ed. Hang on. There we go. Much better. Hi, I'm Ed Scar, and recently I've been making and painting a bunch of Tanith first and only models. And I've been using a variety of resources to make those models, and they will be featured and have been featured in some other videos. For today's video, I have been contacted by Devic Designs, who does 3D modeling and makes a bunch of 28mm scale stuff. And he sent me over the STLs to his Celtic Guardians set, a series of multi part science fiction soldiers with, importantly, cloaks. As this set includes legs, arms, heads, and all the rest of it, they can be used standalone. However, what I'm most interested in is using the torso and cloak part as an upgrade part for Games Workshop's Cadian or Catachin models. As this is a set of 3D printable files, there's a lot of technical stuff that I should probably cover first. If you're not interested in any of that and just want to have a look at the nice pictures at the end, click this time signature, as that's where the models I'll be painting in this video will be, and also my opinions, given that this is a review. So let's get started. Here we have on Cults 3D the Celtic Guardian set and a nice rendered picture here of all of the parts included. I think it's because there's so many parts but there's no kind of 3D preview so let's have a look at some here. And starting at the bottom we have some legs. There are seven sets of male legs and seven sets of female legs in various poses so if you are using the entire set you can make quite a variety of models and some pretty good detail on them such as the knee pads and even on the boots you can see the boot laces and a lot of these features are very smooth and rounded and that's to help them print out as cleanly as possible the arms are pretty much unisex and a lot of them have a similar two-handed rifle pose and if you're making an infantry squad uh, that's the pose that you're going to be using most commonly however there are some single-handed options this one's waving a knife around and this one is reloading which i think is a very nice touch to top it all off we have the various heads again we have some very smooth details to help them print nicely we have male and female options and these details are extremely fine far smaller than my printer can handle and particularly i like the ones wearing berets mainly because i don't have many heads wearing berets however the core of the set is the torsos with cloaks and for our purposes of making Tanner first and only, it is this part that is going to be used the most. But we again have some female options with slightly different proportions. We have versions with and without head, and actually some options with hoods with no head in. I guess this is so that you can superimpose one of the heads in the software, so that when it prints out you can have different variants of heads. And these options are pretty useful because having a separate head with a hood on it doesn't always match up nicely to a set of shoulders with the kind of shoulder part of the cloak. And every model in the set has a pre-supported version. Now, I'm not a fan of pre-supports, but for the sake of review, I have used some of them so that I can compare. And they do work pretty well. And there's also some nice extras, including, importantly, a knife in a sheath. And this part is going to be very useful indeed. So let's take a look at the parts that I have chosen to print for this video so that you can wonder at my terrible print quality. Starting out with the most important bits, I have bandolier torso without head and a female torso with the head in. As the female torso doesn't quite line up with the kind of male only Games Workshop models, I've printed arm set three with sleeve and female legs five to make a complete model. And this will allow me to build one Celtic guardian for the other torsos, I want to know how it lines up with the Games Workshop sculpts for use as a kitmash upgrade. Firstly, this is the Catachin legs, and I feel they line up excellently here. The belt is on the leg section for both of these kits, and waist sizes are very similar. To contrast, the Cadian legs aren't quite as good. Neither part here has the belt, and the Cadians have a tunic that leaves this odd crease. As you'll see when I paint them later on, I cut this crease away to improve the look, and these parts do fit very well otherwise. The Catachin arms, and you'll have to excuse me for the gloss primer on these parts, my paint stripper can't remove it. These fit really well into the shoulder sockets, with the flow of the cloak looking great over the oversized Catachin beefcake arms. When trying to line up the two-handed poses, the angles of the torso are not an exact replica of the Catachin torso, 
but with a tiny bit of shaving the inside of the connection, these can be made to line up really well. I will note that these are second-hand arms and have glue on them, so it's actually, it looks worse than it is here. Cadian arms also fit quite well, their shoulder armour being similar in size to the muscles of the catagens. The Cadian two-handed poses fit pretty much the same as the catagen, just a tiny bit of filing on the inside of the connection to make them fit perfectly. To look at heads, both types of heads fit perfectly well. I'll just drop this one on the floor. The neck connection gives a wide range of motion, so you can pretty much pose them how you like. I'll drop this one on the floor as well. But I did want to print off some of the beret wearing heads for comparison, as I thought those were quite interesting for the army's look as a whole. One thing I forgot to show a close up of is the bayonet in sheath here, which can represent the straight silver knives. These fit the bill just right, and surprisingly print very well for such a tiny part. But I'm actually painting four models for this video, and so let's look at what they are. The first is the female standalone Celtic Guardian built out of the parts in the set. Second is the Catachin parts with the Devic Designs torso and cloak. Third is the Cadian parts with the Devic Designs torso and cloak. Finally, this is a separate model entirely, printed as a single piece and is available for free from Devic Design's Thingiverse page. If you want a closer look at the sculpting work before purchasing the full set, this is a nice one to print off, and for the sake of comparison I wanted to include it in the video today. And so now let's paint. And I suspect anybody who's interested in this video has already seen at least one of my previous videos painting the various Tanith first and only models. I really shouldn't bore you today with going through all of the painting steps that I go through, but just quickly for those who haven't seen, the Tanith first and only uniform is black, and I include a little grey for some basic highlights and a black wash to tie it all together. There are some details in brown and Caucasian skin tones, and finally the cloak is a dark and a light green, and then the camo patterns get striped over the top, and every single stripe gets a tiny highlight if it passes over a highlight on the green underneath. But I do want to talk about 3D printing while I play off some video of me painting in the background, or specifically my 3D printer and why I don't like pre-supported models. My printer has a 1K screen. What that means is it doesn't have a lot of pixels in comparison to other printers with 2K, 4K or 8K screens. Due to the lower pixel density, any print that comes off my printer has a very odd micro texture to every surface. I haven't learned how to paint over this texture as well as over smoother models like plastic or pewter models that are cast. I haven't learned how to wet blend over this surface and so my painting here won't perfectly match the rest of the models in the set. Once I've done 5 or 10 or you know the whole regiment's worth, I'll probably have enough experience to be able to paint it really nicely. But until then, I and you are just going to have to suffer my poor painting attempts. And that's connected to why I'm not a fan of pre-supported models, or the cult of the angled print. Any given shape of support might work excellently on one printer, but that same support might cause issues on others. In the case of most pre-supported models, they leave little chunks on the model when I print them, and Devic designs are the same. What that means to me is that DeVix pre-supported models are probably excellent on a different printer. I have found with other models that by making my own supports I can match the capabilities of my printer and get nicer prints. I certainly like that someone with a new printer can get a pre-supported model and have the confidence that the supports are good and strong and that any issues they're having are something else to do with their print settings or the machine physically. But once they get five or ten good prints, they should learn how to do supports themselves to match the capabilities of their printer, because that will instantly improve the quality of their prints. So while I tidy my soapbox away, I'm done with my little ramble. Importantly for the video today, Devic Designs models are pre-supported, the pre-supports are done well and nice and strong. And now that I've finished painting, let's talk about these models aesthetically rather than technically. Starting with the standalone single piece Celtic Guardian, this is a nicely designed statue, stoic and ready for action, and has all of the features that I'm after, except for one. I did have to add the sheathed bayonet to this one. I particularly like the shape of the cloak draped over his arm. 
Unfortunately, that shape would be very difficult to make work with the multi-part kits, so this will have to stay as a standalone model. The other standalone Celtic Guardian is the Female Soldier, which by itself is an important part of the set as Games Workshop still haven't made any female guard troopers. With the number of parts in this set you can make a variety of poses, so even in some quantity they will still look distinct. Even then, remember that you can easily mirror parts in your slicer to double your variety. I of course hit on the perfect variant of this model, moving forwards into position swiftly and silently. Now to represent the Tanith by including the approved percentage of Games Workshop products, here is the Cadian conversion. The arms and legs work better than I expected and you can easily cover any imperfections on the waist join by just adding some of the pouches, grenades and bayonets that come with these kits. I would say here that I'm not a fan of the helmet. It's too recognisably Cadian for me. Uh, but I wanted to use it for the video, as if some of you are buying the kit for this type of conversion, this is the head that you're going to be using. Unless, of course, you use the heads that are included in the Divic Design set, because you'll have that set. Finally, the Catagen conversion. This one is my favourite. Silly, muscly arms, firing from the hip and yelling like an 80s action hero, and the angle in the legs means that the cloak bellows outwards as the entire torso is leaning forward slightly. This certainly leans me towards recommending the Catagen kit if you're planning on using Devic set as conversion parts. But let's also compare these to the original 2002 Gaunt's Ghosts models which I painted a few months ago. This is Corbeck. Straight away you can see that the originals have very sharp folds in the cloaks, whereas Devic's are more rounded. Which, to be honest, I actually prefer because it makes them look like they're flowing in the wind. This is the female ghost that most people name Tona. As the originals are all monopose moulds, the cloaks get sculpted against their bodies, their legs, uh, which is very difficult to do with the multi-part kits. This is Gaunt himself. Another thing that it's easier to do with monopose models is dynamic shapes, with cloaks flying out behind them as they're running, or folding over when they're jumping over something. This is Bryn Milo. Each of the torsos has a different shape of cloak, but they all have the, the same feeling. They kind of have to be so that they can be used with the multi-part sets. There is enough variety in them to make them interesting when in numbers, but still limiting in flair and pose. Just for fun, this is my kitbashed guard with milliput cloak. Clearly even my poor quality 3D printer can still print better than I can sculpt. Shape, texture, design, strength, Devic wins hands down on all accounts here. And finally, here are the heads that I printed, uh, which printed fine, but oh boy, my painting here isn't that great. Certainly I have some improvement to do so that I can use these heads on a few models. So hopefully I've gone into uh, enough depth so that you can understand kind of how they could be used, how they're intended to be used, and the advantages and disadvantages of the system. But before I give my final conclusion, I should acknowledge my biases. So first of all, I did not buy these myself. Devic Designs was kind enough to send me along the STLs for a review. However, I did make it clear to him that I would be making a fair review, and just because he sent me over the files doesn't mean I would give him any kind of advantage that way. Secondly, I really don't like 3D printing. There are so many annoying factors about it, the process, the cleaning, and particularly things like the low print quality that I get. So do keep that in mind, given how I'm talking about the uh, printing aspect of things. And also, I am a fan of Gaunt's Ghosts. If you haven't worked that out for yourself, I'm not sure what I can do to help you. I've been reading the books for more than 20 years, and I've been making models well, I bought the first lot of models in 2002, so that's getting on for 20 years as well. So, what do I think about the set? The multi-part aspect of it is very useful both for having a bunch of very different designs, but also in terms of using them as conversion parts for the official kits. Uh, using them standalone is not something I can say I'm particularly interested in. 
given the old hoo-ha about, oh, it's a fake model and you need a certain percentage of real parts and I just can't be bothered to get into that argument, really. But until Games Workshop makes some decent female guard, um, this is certainly a good option for that. But as conversion parts, they work really nicely with both Catachin and Cadian uh, arms and legs and the heads as well, although you can certainly use some of the included heads for the berets. And the other heads, you don't have to use the beret heads, I just really like the beret heads. So if we talk about the price quickly, uh, at the moment it is like £9.87. Colts 3D does tend to follow the exchange rates um, quite regularly. Prices will change by a few pennies up or down and there'll be odd numbers. But coming in at just under a tenner, even if you print 10 torsos, that's a pound each, that's quite reasonable, I think. And if you then, how big is an Imperial Guard on me? How long is a piece of string? Once you've got the files, you're only paying once for that, and so it's just a case of running your printer um, for the next six weeks to get enough torsos and cloaks. So it certainly is a very reasonable option for converting over Tanith models. I will say, as I briefly mentioned earlier, that all of the different shapes of cloaks are sort of very similar in that they're kind of just draped down and back. I would like to see a little more variety with kind of swished over to the side and kind of folded over and like to make it look like characters are running and jumping and being more dynamic. And when combined with different legs, that could make some cool effects. But even with the selection that there is, once you've got 10 or 20 of them, they're going to look different enough for line infantry. I don't think these are going to be good enough for display models, unfortunately. And partly that's to do with my print quality, because I don't think I'd ever be able to get a display quality model off of my printer. So those are my overall conclusions. I certainly think that this is a good buy. And so from me, I will say goodbye. With one last final thanks to Divic Designs for sending over these for review. I'm Edgar, I always will be, and thank you very much for watching.